Chapter 9. I couldn't believe at first I hadn't been fired. Miss Lambert couldn't quite believe it either. When I came back downstairs, I was here, sat at my, and sat back at my table. Well, I don't get it, she said, standing over me. Guess he likes you, huh? I nodded. She nodded, too. Okay, well, I get how it is, and you might have Mr. Drew's trust, but it's going to take some time to earn mine, she said, clapping her hands together. I nodded again. Right, she said. Check it with Story and see if they have the new script. I was up on my feet in a flash, ready to show that Mr. Drew's faith in me wasn't misplaced. Ready to show Miss Lambert that I wasn't someone she should be worried about. Got it, I said. I immediately made for the elevator. Bunny, she called after me. Yeah. Now, you keep working on Cowboy Bendy, she said. It better be worth all this. Her expression was as severe as ever. And yet, finally, I was getting my first arts assignment. I was, terri I was terrified at making a good society. I couldn't even really make it in the first place, but I was so excited not to be fired and to get to draw that I couldn't help but grin wide. Yes, ma'am. The rest of the day I was spent doing gopher duties, which I really didn't mind because I couldn't actually work, work on Cowboy Bendy. I was thrilled that I was finally going to get the chance to draw. I do more than just run around like this, but at the same time I couldn't do what my grandfather did. And what if people notice the, yeah, notice the difference in ability if I started you know, drawing my own stuff? So you're in a bit of a pickle, said Dot after I'd explained it all. She took a sip of root beer and, le and leaned back in her seat. I hadn't wanted to admit any of it to her, but she'd heard about my almost firing and had demanded we go to the pub to get her again. So she could pass me her cowboy bendy script and hear the whole story, which I told her. I could have seen to keep stuff from her. Yeah, I said. I need to practice. But I don't think I could get, get good overnight. The door behind us swung open. And I glanced up to see Jacob, Richie, and a couple guys from accounting come into the bar. I hunched my shoulders a bit. I didn't really want to be seen by them. I didn't know why. Maybe I was a little intimidated. They disappeared into the ground by the bar and I looked up at Dot. So, I've been looking into this Tom fellow, she said. Oh, i have forgotten I'd asked her about that. Yeah, so it's very interesting. He works for a company called Gent. Seems pretty high up in the company. It looks like he's working directly and Mr. Drew wants a kind of machine. With Mr. Drew? I don't know what it is. Couldn't figure out where, where it is even. But I'm going to keep looking for it. What kind of machine? Dot shrugged and sipped her drink. Maybe a more efficient way of filming cartoons? I nodded. Maybe. Look at you two so cozy. Jacob was, uh, uh, Jacob was suddenly uh, sitting next to me. Uh, slamming his beer down so the foam and slipped over the edge and splashed onto the table. Dot rolled her eyes. In this case, I wouldn't want to be uh, uh, getting cozy with anyone. No offense, buddy. Ain't that the truth, replied Jacob. Taking off his hat and mopping the sweat on his brow with a, a paisley handkerchief. So, buddy, he asked, how are you liking working at the studio? It's been interesting, I replied. Well, I'll say it. I'm glad you weren't fired. And I'm glad you drew that picture. Because sometimes it's hard to get a whiskey notice. Trust me, I know. People will underestimate you at every turn, Mac. He, he, he looked at Dot. Right? Absolutely, she nodded. If anyone knows what it's like to be ignored, it's the woman. And the black man. Trust us on this one. Now he raised his glass to dots as she clanked hers with his. It was as playful as I, as I ever saw her get. But it wasn't actually playful in a way. But it wasn't actually playful in a way. You have a girl, buddy? Jacob asked after taking a swig. Mm. Nah, I replied. Mm. Really? A good looking kid like you? I'm not too focused on that stuff right now, I said. The fact that I wasn't focused on that stuff at all. Sure, there have been a few girls in the neighborhood I've been sweet on, but I didn't have the time to ask them on a date. Didn't have the money to, either. And that was this new job and everything. Besides, it felt really uncomfortable talking about this with work and people. With, me with any people. You could focus on more than one thing at once, you know, said Jacob. I know, I just... Need to get some stuff in order. And I live at home with my ma. And my grandfather shares my bed. 
and I need to become a pro artist overnight. How's your dating life then? He asked it, turning to Dot. She didn't say anything, just looked at her drink. You look sad there, Ruby Slippers. Did I say something wrong? She laughed a little at that and looked at him. Don't call me that. And no, it's just that I don't date. I'm not ready. Ready, I said. Dot sighed hard. You two boys, pushing, always asking questions. Don't like to answer them, but you love asking them. I'm sorry, I said. At this point, the whole conversation ha had got away from me. I didn't really let's see, know, know what I was doing or supposed to say. Come on, Dot, said Jacob, nudging her with his elbow. I said, no, no. I said, no, Jacob. She said firmly, not staring him down. Okay, okay, I know when I'm not wanted, he stood. Let me see, picking up his beer and, and took a swig. See you two in the funny pages. He shook his head like we were both nuts. And then he slipped into, into the crowd back towards the table with the other guys. Dot looked at me for a moment, then leaned her elbows on the table and hunched over a bit. I don't like talking about that stuff. I don't blame you, I replied. She took another pause, then a sip of soda. She looked back at me. My husband died in the war, she said matter-of-factly. You were married? I asked. I knew that wasn't the point. I also knew I shouldn't have been that surprised. Many of the girls in my neighborhood, the ones I'd grown up with, had already settled down and were keeping house. But, but there was something about Dodd that just seemed like... Well, not like them. Not for long. We were sweethearts in high school. Then he turned 18. They conscripted him. We married at the courthouse just before he had to leave. No, she swirled around. No, we we'll see. Let's see, the remains of her soda at the bottom of her glass slowly. Let's see, a month later, he was dead. A month after that, the war was over. I, I, I didn't know what to say. I didn't know why, let's see, she was so sharing. Yeah, she was sharing this with me, especially after everything she said about boys pushing too much. My pa died in, my pa died in the war early on in 42. It was all I could think about saying. Even if I didn't want to think about it in the first place. She looked up at me and gave me a sad smile. I'm sorry, buddy. I'm sorry for you two. Don't you want to? Nah. I don't really want to talk about it right now. I felt really awkward. I didn't know how to carry on with a conversation like things were normal. I didn't know what Dot wanted me to. I just... Uh, I didn't know anything. How did someone just uh, change a subject like this? Did you just uh, change it? So what do you think I should do? I asked it, giving it a sh giving it a shot. Dot looked at me for a moment. Then, you mean about Cowboy Bendy? I nodded. Relieved we were on the same page. Relieved that it worked. I think you just need to practice. I think you should also ask your grandfather if he could teach you. I can't do that, I said, shaking my head and finishing my coke with a gulp. Why not? He barely speaks English. What does he speak? Polish. Dot thought about that. I don't know if you had to speak the same language. I mean, it would be different if this was about writing, but art is universal. Couldn't he just, you know, show you? I shrugged. I didn't know. Maybe he could, but that wasn't the biggest problem. The biggest problem was that no, he was there at all, that he creeped me out, took up my space, that my mom hadn't even told me he was coming, that we had one more, no, see, that mouth to feed. That I resented him. It was hard asking favors with someone like that. But maybe she was right. Maybe it didn't matter how I felt about him. Stick to your mission. Be ambitious. Dreams come to life. Do what you have to do. I'll think about it. He just got to the States and, all, and he's all confused. He might not be able to help me even if I asked. You're Jewish, right buddy? Asked Dot. I felt that put a very familiar tightness in my gut. That protective shield unfurled over my spine. I sat up a little straighter, but tried to sound even more casual. Yeah. Is that a problem? I didn't sound casual. I sounded angry, and I knew it. Of course not, said Dot. It's just... You said your grandfather was from Poland. We're... No, we're Polish. I snapped back. I snapped back. Obviously, we were. Dot held up her hands. Never mind, sorry. I don't want to get personal. 
Well, I already told you my dad died, and then I do wish, but yeah. No, let's not get personal. I couldn't not feel angry. I just knew she was judging me. I knew it. Like the bullies in the schoolyard when I was a kid. Like those same bullies all grown up, calling me names as I walked through their neighborhood. I hated it. Dot shook her head. I get it. I'm sorry. She pushed her glass away from her across the table. I'm going to go now. She stood up mm -hmm, mm -hmm, then, just like that, and then turned and was gone. I felt bad. The defensiveness vanished, and I, and I was up on my feet, chasing after her outside. She was already halfway down. It was in a block, walking that, that fast way she did. I cut up finally and grabbed her shoulder. She whipped around and gave me a look of death. Oh, she said, her expression softening. It's you. Look, I didn't mean to make you upset, I said. I know. I looked at her. She looked at me. Are you still angry with me? I asked. I'm not angry at all. I feel bad. I upset you. I thought I should leave. No, but see, because it's getting late. She looked at me no, like I was the one who was doing something strange. Oh, I just thought you were thrown out. No. No? Okay, then. I said goodnight, and she said the same, and that was the first thing I learned about her directness. Your directness. You once said to me that you liked writing subtext in your scripts, but had no time for subtext in real life. I always remember that. So just in case I haven't been clear yet, Dot, and following your always amazing lead, I'll just say it plain. You have to save them. You have to stop him.